Well, good morning. good morning. I love the verse in the Bible that says, Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And indeed, this morning, as we come into His house to worship Him on His, isn't it a beautiful Lord's Day today? We can experience freedom because Jesus is here and we're with Him. And so I'm so glad that you are here today on a weekend where so many are out and about traveling. I'm so glad that to see you here today, especially if you're a visitor. If you're a visitor here today, we are so glad that you're here today, and we would love to, to know who you are and where you live, so if you could just reach in front of you and grab a visitor's card sometime during the service and fill that out, and in just a few minutes when the offering plate's placed, place in there, we would sure appreciate that. Um, but so glad that you're here today. I uh, want to let you know of a couple of things that are important in the life of our church that are going on. First of all, Vacation Bible School. Vacation Bible School is June 26th to the 30th. And Russ is needing some help to make that week the best week it can be for our children of our church and our community. So if you have a little time and some energy, uh, please see Russ and we'll, he'll get you signed up to help out with that week because uh, it's always such an important week. Also, I hope that you grab one of these change Um It's not a baby bottle, but it's a change If you have not grab one of these. There's some located on a table right outside these doors by the elevator, and there's some downstairs on the table that uh, you could pick that up, and, and uh, what a great opportunity we have as a church and as individuals to be a part of the Pregnancy Resource Center. They have a, a campaign every year called the Baby Bottle Boomerang, and so uh, they say that one of these things filled with change could uh, hold up to about $30. And so someone this week has already grabbed one and filled it up and placed it on the, the desk downstairs. So if you would like to do that, um, please free, feel free to do that. We'd love to be able to be a part of that. We'll be collecting these from now till Father's Day. Um, I hope that you'll see in the bulletin where this summer, starting next week, uh, we'll be having a sermon series on Sunday morning uh, on the uh, Psalm 23. Uh, most of us behind... Uh, maybe John 3, 16, that's probably one of the most familiar passages in all of the Bible. And most of the time, uh, I think every funeral I've ever been at, I've read or I've heard Psalm 23. But Psalm 23 has so much truth, not only for times of crisis like a funeral, but for every day of our life. And we're going to be looking at that verse this summer. Um, also, just a little housekeeping in just a few minutes, at the end of our service, we'll be observing the Lord's Supper. Hopefully you grabbed the, the communion uh, cup and wafer when you came in. If not, we can get those to you during our greeting time, or, or you can find your way. We'll make sure you get one of those. But just to remind you, it's kind of a little awkward, but uh, uh, the little flap has two pieces of uh, little flaps on it. One's a clear flap, and if you pull it, that will get you to the little wafer. And then the rest of the flap, if you open that, will get you to the juice. So um, just want to get, get you prepared so that when it comes that time, you'll be prepared in all kinds of ways. Thank you for being here today. I am super glad that you are here, and uh, it's going to be a wonderful day. Let's stand and greet one another this morning. Such a great day to be in the house of the Lord. Let's continue. Let's start our worship service with Shine, Jesus, Shine. Let's all stand together. Lord, the light of your love is shining in the midst of the darkness shining. Jesus, light of the world, shine upon Set us free by the truth you now bring us. Shine on me. Shine on me. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Blaze, Spirit, blaze. Set our
sounding so good this morning. Let's continue in worship as we sing, We Will Remember. Oh 
God, you are, you are faithful, and Father, you're true, and you are truly a good Father, and we're thankful for all your love, and Father, the love that you uh, was so strong that it endured the cross for us, so that it would take the burden of our sin, and Father, may we never forget that, or never take you for granted, uh, Father, we love you, and we praise you, in your holy name I pray, amen, you may be seated. I will kneel in the dust at the foot of the cross where mercy paid for me, where the wrath I deserve, it is gone, it has passed, your blood has hidden me.
dust at the foot of the cross where mercy paid for me. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he's given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. With the rising of the sun each morning, we remember how you rose to the call. And with every sunset, in every evening, we remember the beauty of your sacrifice. We remember what you stood for, and we will not forget what it cost. To the families, friends, and fellow service members of the heroes we've lost, we remember. In the peaceful days, in the quiet nights, in the moments of joy and laughter, in the seasons of celebration, we remember that it did not come without a price. Because of you, we can walk in liberty. Because of you, the flag is still there. Because of you, this is the land of the free and the home of the brave. On this day, we remember the price you paid to pledge your allegiance. So today, tomorrow, and for the rest of our lives, we remember. Memorial Day is a special and important time as we remember the men and women who served in our armed forces, who gave their life so that we could be here today and free. So if you're here today and you've had a family member that has served in the armed services of military in any kind of way and is no longer living, would you please stand up? So many. If you're here today and you served in the military or are serving, would you stand up? You just, everybody stay standing. Or if you have a family member serving or that has served in the military, would you please stand up? So we as a church and as a nation and as individuals want to thank you for what you and your family members have represented and done so that we could uh, have freedom. 
Let me pray for us. Father, you have taught us that no love is greater than the love that gives itself for another. And today and on this Memorial Day weekend, as a nation and as a church and as Christians, we pause to remember those in the military who have given their lives for the freedoms that we enjoy today. We pray that you would help us all to look to you for strength and our comfort and our guidance. God, may the example and sacrifice of so many that are standing here today that represent others inspire us the selfless love of your Son and our Lord Jesus Christ. God, we ask that you bless the families of our fallen troops, that you would help their, fill their homes and their lives with your strength and peace. God, we also pray that you be with all who serve in our armed forces today. Bless them, be with them and their families. Father, we ask that you would grant your love and protection. God, we ask that you, your peace would prevail around the world. And Father, we pray that your mercy would rest upon our nation. God, help us to remember and to acknowledge with thanksgiving all that you've done for us as a country. Father, help us to be repentant of our sins. Most of all, Father, we pray that you would help us to turn our hearts to you and to your word where we find the true peace that passes all understanding. God, this weekend, we pray that you would move us to know and to take hold and to treasure you and your saving grace. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Our offertory hymn is Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus. We'll sing all four verses and our ushers will come at the end, so let's, let's sing. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross, lift high his royal banner, it must not suffer loss, from victory unto victory, his army shall be
Father, we thank you so much for all that you do for us and the many, many ways that you bless us. Each day that we live, Lord, you pour out new blessings upon us and you bless the work of our hands so that even now we're able to give an offering. And we ask you, Lord, to bless this offering that it would honor Christ and do much good for his kingdom. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Who are we that you would be mindful of us? What do you see that's worth a looking our way? We are free in ways that we never should be sweet release from the grip of these chains like hinges straining from the weight my heart no longer can keep from singing all that is within me cries for you alone be glorified emmanuel god with us my heart sings a brand new song the debt is paid these chains are gone, Emmanuel, God with us. Lord, you know our hearts don't deserve your glory. Still you show a love we cannot afford like hinges straining from the weight my heart no longer can keep from singing all that is within me cries for you alone be glorified Emmanuel God with us 
my heart sings a brand new song. The debt is paid, these chains are gone, Emmanuel, God with us. Such a tiny offering compared to Calvary, but nevertheless, we lay this at your feet. Such a tiny offering compared to Calvary, but nevertheless, we lay this at your feet. All that is within me cries for you alone. Be glorified, Emmanuel, God with us. These chains are gone, Emmanuel, God with us. Thank you, Matt. Appreciate that so much. Great job. And, and Miss Frida, thank you. And Nancy. For the offertory, thank you, and choir, awesome job, um, wonderful job. Miss Lynn, that song was perfect. Thank you, thank you for that. If you have your Bibles, please take them and turn with me to the book of Deut Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 6, we're going to be looking at verse 10 through 12 in just a minute. It is said that in 1863, a small group of women in Columbus, Mississippi, went out to the local cemetery there to place flowers on the graves of Confederate soldiers. And while they, while they were there, they noticed a section of the cemetery that had graves for Union soldiers, and so they placed flowers on those graves too. Now they did this to honor the dead soldiers, and then they offered prayers for these families. A couple years later, Henry C. Wells in Waterloo, New York, closed his drugstore on May 5th and invited the entire community to honor the soldiers that had given their lives. They also placed flowers on graves and flew the flag at half-staff. Many other communities participated, and this was first known as Decoration Day. And as the end of World War I, the memorial emphasis was shifted to people who had given their lives in all American wars. And in 1971, Memorial Day was declared a national holiday uh, by an act of Congress. Memorial Day is now designated to recognize those who have paid the supreme price in their military service. While many this weekend will enjoy the legal holiday while heading to the lake, heading to the beach, and they will enjoy a good barbecue with family and friends, let's not forget it's a day to remember. Now, the Bible is full of memorials. The word remember or remembrance or memorial are found more than 230 times in the Bible. And just maybe it is mentioned so many times in the Bible because maybe God knew that remembering is something that we're not very good at doing. Someone has said it takes no effort to forget, but it takes a lot of energy to remember. For many years, Frank Harrington served as a senior minister of the Peachtree Presbyterian Church in Atlanta. He once told about a friend who traveled to England. While there, his car broke down, and while he was waiting for the car to be repaired, he decided to walk around this small town. And in the corner of an old and quaint cemetery, he noticed a stone wall. In that enclosed area were 50 graves of young men between the ages of 17 and 25. These men were from New Zealand, 
and they had died in the village during World War I. At the entrance of this area was a marker with this inscription, We shall never forget in this village their sacrifice. Well, this triggered the curiosity of this visitor, so he wanted to find out what these young men had done. He walked around the village seeking information about their noble service, and no one knew. When asked, the villagers looked at him with puzzled expressions on their faces. This village, which had promised to remember, had forgotten. Well, in our passage of Scripture this morning, God's plan and promise was to bring his people, the Israelites, into an abundant and prosperous land called the Promised Land. But with this plan and promise, and with all these abundant blessings, there was an inherent danger. That is, in the midst of all these blessings, God's people would forget the Lord and all that he had done for them. So Moses wants to give them a strong warning. And that's what I want us to look at this morning. So let's look at Deuteronomy 6, starting with verse 10. When the Lord your God brings you into the land, he speaks swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give you a land with large, flourishing cities you did not build, houses filled with all kinds of good things you did not provide, wells you did not dig, and vineyards and olive groves you did not plant. Then when you eat and are satisfied, be careful that you do not forget the Lord who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery." So the Israelites were about to go from rags to riches, from wandering around in the wilderness to ownership of flourishing cities with houses filled with great things and vineyards and olive groves already planted. And in in, in anticipation of all these blessings that they would receive in this wonderful land, Moses warns the people against forgetting the Lord. You see, Moses knew... If these people forgot all that God had done for them, it would lead to their downfall. So notice with me, Moses repeats the phrase, which you did not, in verses 10 and 11. These words were to remind the Israelites that God was the source of all their blessings. It was not them, but God who had delivered them out of Egypt. He is the one that had taken care of them and was with them along their journey, and he had blessed them with everything that they had had. Someone once said, if you see a turtle on a fence post, just know someone else put them there. It did not get there on his own. So Moses warned God's people not to forget. And if we're not careful, we can do the same, whether as a nation or as a church or as individuals. We can get sidetracked and distracted and with all our stuff, and we, f- we can forget about God. So this, mor- m- this Memorial Day weekend, let me suggest some things that we need to remember. First of all, remember that God is good. Now, sometimes it's popular to blame God when things don't go our way. But remember, everything good we have comes from God. The bad stuff is really on us. The bad stuff results from when we make decisions apart from God's will, the bad results from sin in our lives. We recognize that all have sinned and all have fallen from the glory of God, but through it all, God is good. Remember, God is good. Second, remember that God is able. God is able. Ephesians 3.20 reminds us, He is able to do immeasurably more than anything we can ask or imagine. There is nothing impossible with Him. The size of our vision is related to the size of our God. How big is your God? Third, remember God is wisdom. Proverbs 3, 6 reminds us, He directs our paths. There is no better path to follow than God's path. When we are looking to make a difficult decision, there is no better choice to make than to make God's choice. It may be often difficult, but it's always the right choice. And then remember, God is present. Never will I leave you or forsake you, says the Lord. Jesus promises us that he is always with us. There may be many times in our life that we may feel that God is away. 
But don't let your emotions deceive you. He is as close as you as he's ever been. When, and when you're walking through the valley, let him take your hand and walk with you. We are to remember. But here we are on Memorial Day weekend. And on this occasion, we are called to remember and respect those who died so that we could be free today. So this morning, this weekend, we do want to take that opportunity and to remember those brave soldiers who sacrificed their lives defending our country. Jesus once said, there is no greater love than to lay one's life down for a friend. Our service men and women have been willing to do that from the very founding of our nation. In the Civil War, over 631,000 total soldiers were killed. In World War I, 116,000 American soldiers died. In World War II, 407,000 American soldiers died. 54,000 American soldiers died in Korea. 58,000 died in Vietnam. 148 died during Desert Storm. And over 4,000 American soldiers died in Iraq. Of course, there have been many other conflicts and casualties as well, so more than 1.1 million Americans have died in wars around the world fighting for our freedom that we enjoy in this country today. 1.1 million, that's a big number. But each one and every one of those is important. Some of you are here today who have had family and friends who have served our country with this distinction. Keith and Carolyn Maupin raised their son Matthew in the suburbs of Cincinnati. He, was the, he saw the images of 9-11 on the television just as many of us did. For Matthew, it ignited his sense of patriotism and compelled him to enlist in the Army Reserve in 2002. At 6'2", 220 pounds, with a boot size 15, Matthew was something of a gentle giant among his fellow soldiers. He served in the 724th Transportation Company out of Bartonville, Illinois. And on April 9, 2004, Matthew was reported missing in action. For almost four years, his parents, Keith and Carolyn, worked tirelessly to ensure that the search for Matthew and four other missing soldiers remained in the public eye. They founded the Yellow Ribbon Support Center in Cincinnati. They sent packages to de deploy service members. They provided moral support and encouragement to deploy troops and families. Then on March 29, 2008, Matthew was finally found, but not in the way anyone had hoped. They found what remained of his body, and he was brought home. They couldn't find the church building big enough to hold the crowd for his funeral. So they held the funeral in the Cincinnati Reds baseball stadium, and it was filled to capacity with people who came to honor a soldier that gave his life fighting for the freedom that you and I have today. So on this Memorial Day, Matthew's family will pause and remember and we remember, too. Freedom isn't free. We stand on the shoulders of over 1.1 million people who gave their lives for our freedom. No greater sacrifice has been ever given to those, than those brave men and women who have paid the ultimate price with their lives. Memorial Day is a day to remember. But as we remember the many brave men and women who secured our political freedom, we also want to take time to make sure we remember the one who secured our ultimate freedom over sin and death. Because as Christians, most importantly, we always need to remember Jesus. Jesus, who sacrificed his life in order to give us eternal life. Isaiah 53, 4-5 reminds us, but he... He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The t punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, we are healed. So this morning, let's take some time to remember Jesus. Because Jesus died to, in order to set us free from our sins, to free us from death and so much more. The truth is, the only way that we can experience genuine freedom is through Jesus. 
Everything else is just a shadow of freedom. I read a story this week about a prisoner in Sydney, Australia, who tried to escape from jail by climbing underneath a hood of a van that was delivering bread. When the van made its next stop, the prisoner sneaked out from under the hood, hot and dirty, and he found himself in the yard of another prison just four miles down the road. And just like this prisoner, our own strength, our own efforts to find our salvation and freedom will only leave us in another prison four miles down the road of life. Our best attempts at freedom from sin and death only leave us dejected and dirty in another prison because we cannot save ourselves. Now, I know it almost sounds anti-American this morning to, to not encourage you to pull up yourselves by your bootstraps, but when it comes to our relationship with God, salvation and freedom only comes from what Jesus has done for you, not what you or I can do for him or anything else we can do. We don't earn God's love. We are invited to enjoy it, to experience it, and to embrace it. And just as our American freedoms have been bought and paid by the blood of Jesus by present and past soldiers, our eternal freedom has been bought and paid for the, with the blood of Jesus Christ. And that's something worth remembering. In 2016, the graduating class of the U.S. Military Academy at West Point was given graduation rings. Each of these rings contained small amounts of steel from the World Trade Center. It was a graphic, constant reminder to them that on 9-11 terror attacks on our country, this ring will help them remember. And in the same way, inscribed in almost every communion table I've ever seen are the words, do this in remembrance of me. These words came straight from Jesus' mouth. The Bible says the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he was given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So in a sense, every time we gather here as Christians, we were reminded in remembrance of me. And every time we gather around this table, we remember the sacrifice that Jesus made on our behalf in remembrance of me. When Jesus started the Lord's Supper that night, it was his way of saying, never forget what has been done for you on the cross. Never forget the pain and the suffering and the sacrifice. Though the break, broken bread he, the bread, he reminds us of his body that was broken to meet our need of salvation. Through the poured wine, he reminds us of, of his blood that was spilled out for our forgiveness. Through Jesus' broken body, and spilled blood, he became the perfect sacrifice. He atoned for our sin. He redeemed us for all eternity. So, on this Memorial Day weekend, let's remember the ones and the one who sacrificed for our freedom. Because when we take communion, we don't just eat the bread or drink the juice, but we remember what he did for us. So let's prepare ourselves this morning for this special time. Right where you sit, would you take a minute just to examine your heart, take some time and think about and remember what Jesus has done for you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Today, we are reminded of the sacrifice of our Savior. His body broken, his blood spilled, the weight of our sin crushing his shoulders. Today, 
we confess our unrighteousness. We lay down our arrogance. We surrender in obedience at the foot of the cross. Today, we remember. Would you pray with me? Father, this morning is this time as we pause from our busy lives, from a busy weekend, we want to think about you. We want to remember you. We thank you for your love for us. We thank you that you proved your love for us, that while we were still sinners, that you died for us. You took our place. Today we remember and we thank you for salvation, for forgiveness, and your love. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now, if you would take the bread. The Bible tells us the Lord Jesus on the night that he was betrayed, he took the bread, and when he'd given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Take and eat. If you take the juice, and in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Take and drink. Father, we do thank you for your sacrifice for us on that cross. We thank you for your love for us. We thank you that because of the cross, we can experience your power and your presence and your provision. But most of all, God, we experience forgiveness. God, we ask you this morning to give us a heart that loves you with all that we are. Help us always to remember you and stay close to you. In Jesus Christ I pray, amen. Well, as we close our time together this morning, I would like for us to stand and sing hymn number 577, My Tribute. And, and uh, maybe you're here today and uh, you've not quite sure understood what we did through the Lord's Supper and because you've never given your life to Christ and you would love to do that today. I would love to spend some time talking to you about that. I'll be down here at the front. Or maybe you've been visiting our church for a while and and uh, you think this may be the, the place where you would want to hop in and serve with us, we would love for you to do that. I'll be down here for that. But whatever decision you make this morning, would you make that now as we stand and sing? How can I say thanks for the things you have done for me things so undeserved yet you give to prove your love for me the voices of a million angels could not express my gratitude all that I have
feel the same way. <laughs> so glad that you're here today and I hope you have a wonderful afternoon and a wonderful week. Please remember how much you mean to us and how much we care for you and if anything comes up that we can help you out this week, please give us a call. We'll do whatever we can to help you out. But again, thank you for being here. Have a great week. Would you pray with me? Father, again, we thank you for your presence with us and the freedom we experience because of you. And so, God, we have freedom, and we have you with us. And so as we walk out these doors today, God, help us to remember that we walk out into a dark and lost world. Many people we'll see this week needs to experience your love and your forgiveness. And maybe just God wants to use us this week to share that with someone that we cross paths with every day, but maybe we just haven't thought about it. Help us to think about it this week. And help us to be bold and be encouraged and give us strength to do what you would have us to do. Thank you, Jesus, for being here today. In Jesus Christ I pray, amen. Oh, may all who come behind us find us faithful. May the fire of our devotion light their way. May the footprints that we leave Lead them to believe, and the lives we live inspire them to obey. Oh, may all who come behind us find us fair.